When we enter into our bodies, when we listen sensitively to what's going on inside ourselves, inside our bodies, there are two different kinds of approaches we can take. One is a process approach in which we enter into what we find. We enter into the process that is happening inside us and we open to that process and listen and allow and let the process unfold in its own way. The other kind of approach we can take is a developmental approach. And that is um, predicated on the fact that we are innately developmental beings. That as neotenous, N-E-O-T-O-N-O-U-S, as neotenous beings, our species is intrinsically able to grow and develop and change substantially on every level, on a um, movement level, on a neurological level, on an emotional level, on a consciousness, consciousness level, which you know brings us into the realm of spirituality. The pitfall with a process um, commitment without a developmental perspective is that we can just loop things through. We can enter into, I'm going to do it now with myself, a feeling in my heart and it's this particular feeling has been going on for a while, a few weeks for me. And it's um, a feeling of opening and then cautious closing, opening and then cautious closing. And it's, it's hanging out. It's, you know, it's been a few weeks and I'm bringing my attention to it. And it's not changing very quickly, um, as many things don't, right? You know, some things change. The minute we bring attention to them, they move all the way through. And other things, you know, once we're aware of them, which maybe has taken decades to get to be aware, um, they, they still take a while, you know, whether it's weeks or months or years, just depends, depends on the nature of everything that's involved. So this particular process of opening, being cautious, opening, being cautious, is a very old process for me. You know, it could go back to six or seven, or it could go back to conception, I don't know, or all of the above, you know, maybe it kind of formed deeper layers. When you add a developmental perspective, the pitfall with a developmental perspective is it can be aggressive. It can be a way of um, pushing, a way of judging, a way of thinking, oh, my heart keeps closing and opening, but opening is better than closing. So I want to open. And I can do it easily right now. I can push my heart open and I can say yes to everything around me. And you can see that I'm not being very aggressive when I do that. But I, I know, because I can feel it, that 
it's a little aggressive, it's a little obtuse, it's a little missing the point of the pulsation of this opening and closing. So in order to bring a developmental perspective to a process perspective in a helpful way, I use the portals of the body. So I feel this opening and closing in my heart and then I check with my portals, my face, my hands, my feet, my pelvic floor. And I look to see what's available when this pulsation wants to move all the way through and out when my being, my consciousness, wants to take this next step into another level, a new phase of development, that is going to rely on the portals being open and available. Because if my heart says, okay, I'm ready to open, and meanwhile, my brain and head are like, no, cautious is good, stay cautious. I might miss the moment. And so my habitual fixation of closing my mind into caution will stop the natural sequencing. So I go into my head When I check now in terms of my particular process I'm in, my pelvic floor is great with it moving whenever it wants to. My feet aren't really even clued into it, but they're fine. My hands are good. My head has some concerns. I've used this cautiousness all my life to be safe. The cautiousness is not an important process in my brain. In my brain, I've worked through cautiousness gazillions of times, and I can do it right now. I can just say, open brain, who knows? We don't need this cautiousness. When our heart's done with it, head and brain, you don't have to hold on to it. And my head and brain say, yep. You know, these are just different parts of the brain, different parts of our beings talking to themselves. But I get a response. It's like, yep, we're good. We're ready to move on whenever you are hard. So I clear that in my portals again and again, and the portals are intimately connected to our developmental nature because we use our portals in the first year of life to push and yield and reach and grasp and pull they're very keyed into any developmental shift that's trying to take place. So that first year of life, we are in developmental hyper speed. We develop so much in the first year of life and we're so clued into our portals. You know, we reach with so much awakeness, wondering when we'll touch, how we'll touch, what we're reaching for. Opening our portals then helps us open to our developmental possibilities. When we open our portals, it taps into what I call core flow the flow between our face and heads and our pelvic floors. 
And as I do that, then, you know, it washes a little bit of the caution out of my heart. But the process is still in process. So supporting process with a developmental perspective means going into core flow and our portals. Supporting development with process orientation slows us down so we're not aggressing against ourselves. We're not pushing anything faster than its natural rhythm. When we get stuck in a process loop, you know, a hamster wheel loop, then we can use our portals and core flow, if we're familiar with that, to go underneath the loop. And then we realize, oh, this is actually, I figured this out a long time ago. And I just got stuck back into the loop here in this different way. I didn't quite recognize it, but it moves right through. So this is what I mean often when I tell people to go underneath something, see if there's a flow that's clearer underneath it, within it, deeper. You know, it's not necessarily spatial, but it feels spatial often. Okay, hope that's helpful. Take care.